Hello and welcome to Panting of the Geeks. This is a painting guide to uh, how I'm going to be painting my Dark Elder. This is much for me to remember how much I painted them in the future and much for you guys to see how I'm doing them. So I have had a couple of requests to actually do a painting guide so this is the start of it and I'll do some more as well. But um, this is um, a conversion you may have noticed. It's got the Reva head on it. I've got a squad like this to paint. These are the ones I'm going to show you to paint because it's got all the different techniques on them um, as opposed to just the normal server rights just having a few of the techniques. Uh, I'm going to be using the techniques from the um, Raiders of Kamora book um, which is a very good book and these guys are going to be the Widowbane Purebloods which is the uh, Trueborn guys um, the main sort of like elites of the Flayed Skull that's why they've all got the Reaver helmets on to match uh, the, uh, the main guy in charge of them. So um, we shall get started. So the first thing I want to do is after you put your miniatures together is give it a good spray or spray the whole squad in one go of uh, Chaos Black spray. All the paints I'm going to be using in this tutorial are Games Workshop paints. I'm not going to be using any uh, outsider paints for this. So I'm following the instructions of the Raiders of Kamara book. But um, yeah, so once your uh, spray is dried, like so, we're going to be starting this by painting cron red or corn red. You say cron, I say corn, whatever. Um, over the base, this is going to go on all the armor parts, all the armor parts across it, uh, apart from any parts that I'm going to be painting in bone. There's going to be a few more parts on this than the other squads because the higher they go up levels, the more bone armor they've got. So we're going to start by painting the red parts, and I'm going to start by using cron red. So what we're going to want is a good sized brush. Don't want to go too big on the brushes, so I'm going to use the Games Workshop um, standard brush. There it is. It's one of the orange one. Uh, I don't like using too big brushes for a lot of things other than dry brushing and big work and big tanks. So, as always, give your pot a good shake. Make sure that the uh, paint is mixed. This is a base paint, so it's quite thick, which is good. We like that. I'm going to get a bit of water, uh, just thin it down a bit to give it a better coverage. And I'm going to put that on this palette at the side, which you can't see here. I'm using a dry palette for this. Uh, I sometimes use a wet palette for uh, some of the work that I do, but for these guys I'm going to be using dry palette. Keep it straightforward for this. And um, you can use other mediums to water your paint down, not just water. Uh, sometimes use Lamian. Lamian is a very good medium for doing that. And uh, so we're just going to uh, cover this guy in the uh, cron red. That's all the armor pieces, which are all these bits here. Yep. I'm going to be leaving the knee pads and the shoulder pads clear because I'm going to be painting them in uh, the bone color, which I'll get to next. Uh, but we're going to be painting all the red parts first. So I'll come back to you in a second when I've painted all the red parts. Okay, so once you've uh, covered the model in the cron red, and um, if it takes a couple of coats to get it looking good, then it takes a couple of coats. Don't worry too much about that. That's what happens when you thin the paint down. It takes a few more coats, but you get a much better finish. And also don't worry about getting paint all over yourself, because uh, I always get paint all over myself um, in an attempt to keep the brush fine. Uh, <laughs> but there we go. So... Don't worry too much about this stage about getting it over the other parts of the model. I haven't worried at all about getting it over the other parts of the model. Um, basically because this is the first coat and I will usually start my first coat with the colour that's the um, the most obvious on the model. So if it's Blood Angels, obviously going to be blood red across the armour. If they've got a lot of skin on the model, I also paint that first. Um, simply because I usually paint the model inside to out or whatever it's covered in the most of. In this case it's a fully armoured model with no skin and um, it's covered mostly in red, that's why it starts to be red. So the next colour you're going to want is Nun Oil. There it is. So this is going to be a wash. So again, give it a good shake, because even the washes need a shake. I'm going to open this one up and we're going to be quite liberal with the, uh, with the ink. I'm going to be using a wash brush. 
There it is. You guys workshop wash brush for this. And that's the one with that colour on the end, sort of a Hormigon oh purple, if you remember that colour. Um, so we're going to cover that. I'm going to pretty much cover the whole model in this. So uh, I'm going to be quite liberal with it. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you don't want to waste too much, you don't want to drip it everywhere, but always make sure you've got some sort of um, paper down if you haven't got a paint station like this. Or even if you do, it might be a good idea to put some down so you don't have to keep cleaning it like I do. But you can be pretty liberal with the nun oil and null oil. Nun oil? Don't know. Don't know if it's made from nuns or not, but it's uh, null oil all over the model. Make sure you don't miss any gaps. You want to get all those recesses in. And that's going to darken this cron red down. Cron red. Cron red. Down and um, get it right for the next stage. Also make sure the cron red is dry before you do this. You don't want it wet at all. And also you're going to want this stage to dry completely before you move on. So it's probably a good point to do some other models as well because this is going to take some time to dry. Um, as you can see the wash has got into all the recesses, all the little lines there. That's what we wanted. So we're going to leave that now to dry which is going to be a little while. And uh, I'm going to paint some more models in the meantime. So I'll be back with you once that's dry to the next stage. Okay, now the nun oil is dry. Okay. So the next stage is to go back to the uh, chrome red. And we're going to go over the uh, parts again. I'm going to be using the uh, detail brush for this, which is the one with the yellowish. Not bright yellow, but normal yellow, but yarrow yellow end. And what we're going to do, we're just going to basically get some of this, water it down as usual. And what we're going to do, we're going to uh, go over these bits, leaving a little black line between the armour plates. This is just to highlight the cron red on the bits that we've already uh, gone over. So you see that there. So we need to do all the parts we're going to be doing in red. As I said, not the kneecaps and obviously not the shoulder pads. But I'll be back to you when I've done that and you can see where I'm up to. Okay, so you can see that we've uh, gone over the, the red there. And we've let that dry. And you can see the difference on the parts we've been painted there, like on the knee pads. So that red's now a lot brighter than it was. So the next colour we're going to want to use is Evil Sun Scarlet. And to paint this, we're going to want the finest detail brush, Games Workshop does, which is the bright yellow one. And always make sure you've got a point on your brush, another good tip. Use some water and just twist the brush. Um, so you get the brush damp, then you either get a piece of paper or your palette and just twist the brush. Maybe a nice point. And you'll need the point to work this next part. So give the paint a good shake, as always. And we want a little bit of it, and we want to oil that down as well. A little bit of water on this bit, just a tiniest bit, just to let it flow a little bit better. And then, what we're going to do, we're going to do along the edges of the armour. What we want is a nice line along the edge. So we get a line along the edge, you can see that on the camera, just on that lowest plate, you can see it there. And we also want to put a line just slightly down the centre, which follows the sort of reflection on the armour, like that. 
doesn't matter if you get a little bit on the knee pad at this point. And then you want to repeat that on all the armor plates across the entire model. It can be a bit time consuming but it's definitely worth it. So I'll be back with you once I've done all the armor plating and show you what that looks like. Okay, so it is time consuming, but uh, there you go. You can see hopefully there on the camera, all the edges along the edge of the glove will line up there. And the spike also done in, in red. Down the front of the shin pad, the all done in red. This um, Evil Sun Scarlet. Any little spikes done in red, just to highlight them. And all around the chest area here, done with red. So that's the first of the two highlights we're going to use. And the second highlight we're going to use is actually a base colour, which surprised me in the book, but it does actually work really well. We're going to use Dracaria Orange, which if anyone doesn't know, that's the orangutans. The Inquisitor's orangutans. With the uh, magic ability to create any weapon they feel like. So make sure that's shook up again. And then, same again, we just want a little bit of this and a little bit of water just to thin it down a little bit. Okay, with this, we're just going to go right over the top with the one we've just done but only on the most raised areas. If you can imagine the light falling from the top, those are the areas we're going to do from this. So like on the collar there and on the tops of the little chevrons I've just been painted. So I'll just do one of them. So there you can see, if you go on there now, that orange now painted on the top parts of the part just highlighted with the evil suns. And again, you go along the whole model, you do that across all the parts. And I'll show you, the, uh, show you when we've done that. Okay. Okay. So we've gone over the whole model now and highlighted it in the Dracaria orange. See around the Reaver's mask as well to get some highlights there. Around the back as well, and the little spikes on the legs, and then just the very edge of the brush used on the spike on his arm. So that is the basics of the armor. That's the red armor done. So if then if you repeat this process over your whole unit, obviously it'll be up to this point. So the next stage is actually to do the armor which is underneath, which is the body armor. So. Part two of this little tutorial will be doing the body armor. So I hope you've enjoyed part one. Please stay tuned for part two. And I'll see you soon. Bye.